Hey everyone, this is the Lego Ninjago Castle of the Forsaken Emperor, and it feels like two sets to me. Yes, it comes with a castle structure, but it also comes with a rather large dragon. Actually, Jang, it's a wyvern. And I have very different feelings about the two. The main view of the castle makes it very clear right from the start that it is chilled over. It looks very cold and covered with snow and frost and ice. The number and variety of colors and shapes of small pieces used for the main tall sides of the structure here really impressed me. It almost felt excessive. And there's a print that's used here that I didn't expect whatsoever. That's a print compared to this up here, which is a sticker for a very similar thing. It's just a strange use of the print budget, I think, for a set to, to use it on such an, an innocuous piece. Uh, I don't know, it just feels like they could have used it for something more useful. But yeah, it really felt like there was far more intricacy in these basic structure builds than maybe there even needed to be. The sides are almost mirrored. There's a little bit of difference between them, the length of one of those spikes down there, and also the relative amounts of black versus white and the positions of black versus white overhang pieces changes up here you have a spear uh, the other side had just a stud shooting crossbow minifig sized but for the most part you kind of have to look for the differences from side to side yet you do build these completely separately and it feels a little bit different like if you try to do the two sides together you will get tripped up quickly because of how many small and subtle and almost unnecessary differences there are the side towers, to me, feel like frames for a centerpiece, and the centerpiece is much more interesting to me, and much more unique and more exciting. This also has the ability to transform itself a bit. Notice the ice spike bits come up as I do this. So there are a couple different ways you can do this. You can pull the sides apart, or you can pull at the center, or you can push at the center and push the sides apart, or you can rotate this here. I think you're intended just to, to push right there. That's that's a nice reveal. It's very it's very regal. I like these uh, Shinto style column architecture pieces with a lot of ice built into them. They just have nice shaping. And when that opens up, you get to the actual throne. Again, with the high level of variety of pieces, again, this here, this walkway could have just been a four stud wide or six stud wide rectangular path but instead it's shaped up around the sides they've got dark gray light gray white the trans light blue it's embedded in there it's on the top it's on the surface the sides are shaped differently even the stairs are cut off a little bit differently so that even the the throne is not completely symmetrical even though it's kind of trying to be Still, just little bits of, of differences in there. I appreciate very much. There's definitely a lot of effort that went into doing all that. And this looks nice to me. Even around the back, it's fairly well completed, fairly well covered. And there's not too much disruption of the flow. Here again, with more, in my opinion, possibly unneeded details they've got the trans light blue piece that's used here and then if you look farther in there more trans light blue with the panel pieces and there's another just smite, uh, slight sliver of trans light blue back over here all these little details many of which get hidden away most of the time and in my opinion are not uh, not all of them are necessarily valuable now a valid question here would be why on earth would i complain about level of detail, about amount of detail. Detail is generally a good thing. But here's my issue with all of that. They spent a lot of effort and a lot of parts budget in making little details, many of which you can't see much of the time. But for a castle set, there's really not much usable castle here. The walkway up to the throne is very nice. The throne itself is very nice. As a castle though, you can put a figure right there right there and that's about it now here again there is some very good attention to detail i need to call out because for one thing there's a clip over here that can be easily used to hold a figure's weapon so if a figure comes with a weapon like general vex here we'll look at all of them a little bit later on and you want to 
put them up here and maybe the weapon doesn't fit properly, well, just put it there and now you have a place for it. Also, that jumper right there, that two by two round jumper, is such a great piece to put in that spot because it makes it so easy to put a figure there. The figure only needs to be attached with a single stud and what that allows is the positioning of the figure in all sorts of different ways. It can be facing that way, it can be facing that way, can be looking down, can be looking up, you know, this just makes a lot of sense and makes this a much more usable space, even though there's not a lot of space there. That one single extra part helps so much. If the classic Lego castle sets had things like that, even if they were just studs since they didn't have that piece back then, but just something to allow a figure to be rotated around, to be placed in, in different orientations, it would have helped so much with the small spaces that, that used to exist quite a lot. And obviously we still have a problem with, with small spaces because here's another one over here. Again, there's a clip for a weapon. That's good. But there's room for just one figure and you can put that one figure in very easily. So here I've just offset them in a little bit farther. It just makes it very easy to look in any kind of direction. Little things matter in big ways sometimes. However, again, this is a castle. So far we've seen spots to put two soldiers and a king. The downstairs areas are really rough for a toy because you just can't use them. There's, there's nothing to do down there. There's no space. There's some storage here with this bucket that has some weapons. That's good. A couple of weapons and a shovel for shoveling up some snow. You've got a little detail in the back with the general there and a shield up on the wall. Hey, the shield is usable. I mean, they're intended to be decorative here, but you can pull that off and use it with a figure. So I appreciate the accessories, but even that sticker doesn't do that much, even though it is a sticker, you know, it's kind of hidden back there. And no matter how you transform the, the main feature of this, there's just not any usable space here. And on the other side, another sticker, and another barrel. This is actually fun because this does have some unexpected pieces. That totally makes sense for the space. I like that. It's fun and funny, but I certainly would have rather had some space to actually put people and do things. Oh, I forgot to mention the purpose of this right here. It's an ice trap for a Ninjago Spinjitsu tornado. So as it's spinning around and it comes to a stop and then you're just captured there. So they use the unicorn horns here to go with the theme, but also to provide some nice soft uh, you know, little pieces to, to grab that, to, to hold on to it. You could also see it kind of in the reverse where you would spin your way out of this and then pop right out. This ice tower is a completely separate structure that is presented as its, its own standalone thing with no way to easily attach it to the castle or anything. I'm okay with that. I mean, you can always just move it close to the castle if you want to protect the throne with it. Again, there's a lot of really fine detail, much of which most of the time you can't even appreciate. Or maybe I shouldn't say really fine detail, but just a lot of variety with the pieces and, and the shapes. I mean, look behind these nice shield panels, you know, some of the colors and some of the, the little build details that really don't do that much. I mean, the use of that, that uh, translite blue there, it's nice. Black on the other side, you know, just things that are, that are different. But is that really useful? And what all can we do with this build? Well, there's this ballista here and it's awesome. I love the look of this. I really like the build of it. It's simple. But gosh, it looks like it's really been drawn back and is ready to fire off properly. It's just a couple of, of spring-loaded shooters in there with, with uh, brown bolts. But this is good. It looks nice and it's very playable. Uh, it's, it's not set up the best way to interact with figures, that's for sure. A uh, figure can stand up here. Really would have been nice to have some place to have a figure stand and then pretend to be drawing this back. You know, but I'm okay with that. At least these things fire off easily. Just push down from the top. Brown bolts look great and you can fire down and you can fire up. So that's good and go 360 degrees all the way around. 
Down at the base, meanwhile, is your typical Lego one-person jail cell. And this has the most basic action feature built into it, where you have a lever over here that opens it, breaks it open. It's supposed to, you know, you're supposed to have a figure come in and use powers or brute force and, you know, hit it. And then you just use your own <laughs> brute force off to the side. So you're not directly connect connected with what's going on. That's fine. Uh, I like this piece. Uh, there's a little bone in there and a little baby Aragog, I suppose. And... Well, that's that. The Ice Dragon Water. feels like it was designed by a different person. It's very symmetrical, and its build, well, feels like it's created with a minimum number of pieces to get a good look. I felt like there were no wasted pieces whatsoever, and minimal wasted colors. Uh, the color scheme itself is pretty consistent all the way around. You have a tail that can move all around. You have wings on simple ball joints with friction adders from the construction series or large action figure series. Uh, you can pop that off if you try to hyper extend, but you know, it's, it's a fair range of motion. Uh, got the claws here and this is a big old vinyl piece. Big old vinyl piece here. Basic details at the ends that kind of extend the, the ice theme, give you a little bit of spikiness, a little extra spikiness. And the neck has multiple points of articulation with ball joints. So you can bring the head all the way over here, all the way over here, way down. I mean, look at how lively that can be, how much motion you can get just out of that, that neck. They've reused the Legacy Ultra Dragon uh, printed 2x2 two two brick there for the eyes which is a good huh, eyes or ice eyes, which is a good use, good reuse of a printed existing printed piece. Uh, the mouth isn't the greatest, but it looks like it has a little bit of frosty beard there. You see the nostrils, a little bit of shaping around it. It's not the best head, I think, but it's, a, it's effective enough for something that's brick built without too many pieces. And then for legs, bring those all the way back, bring them all the way forward. And you can also splay them out. So you can actually get a fair amount of range of motion that's usable because you have ball joints here rather than just the ratcheted ones that have limited range of motion. Ball joints for the ankles means that you can always balance this and you can create some interesting looks. These toes are effective. You can actually change their angles a bit. Good old bull rock eye in just a regular clear, trans clear right there. With the newer style of plastic you can see through the body a little bit a little bit of ice there but you know it's it's a very visible thing if you're looking at this from the side transmits the light well and no knees but doesn't feel like it needs them i feel like i can do anything that i want with this as a dragon i mean look at this i can even get the look how far i can get the feet apart front to back you know this is really stretching but it works yeah, I think this is just really well done. And that's a spot for a figure to sit there. So if I want to take the Emperor, I can just plop him right on down there. Yeah, I'm very happy with this. I also like the use of the translight blue over the blue Technic uh, axle pins. That's a, a good integration of the color scheme and just makes everything feel like it fits together properly. There's a little, little bit of dark tans shown here, but I don't see any red. I don't see any yellow. I don't see any weird green. Got a little bit of brown there. No big deal. Well done. Regarding the Ice Emperor himself, I won't say he looks cool because that's just too easy of a pun. One that I think about I've probably accidentally made earlier in the video at some point. But he does look really good to me. That color scheme works and the choice of pieces works. The, the choice of, of where to go with the opaque colors versus the metallic prints versus the translucent dual molding or transparent really dual molding it's all good it's very nicely planned nicely planned sorry it's just too easy it's hard to it's hard to not do it uh, he's got his scroll of forbidden spinjitsu there nice dual molded weapon would be nice to get a little bit more of the trans light blue in the tip of that in the blade but this is just how 
things worked out with the mix but yes very good looking and when i take the helmet off you can see how how transparent that head is and they don't even print an alternate face on it because some of it might show through from the front and I'm, I'm i'm good with this setup i honestly feel like the art style used for the prints on the bodies of all of the ice dudes in this series just doesn't doesn't hold up to the level of quality and interest that you get from the dual molded armor pieces these are just so interesting looking all of them in both major color schemes that yeah just I, I don't want to see that print so I'm, I, I don't really care whether it's good or bad it's not bad but uh, I much prefer them with the armor on General Vex gets an opaque light aqua colored head which is a smart decision it looks so much better than a transparent light blue would backed by the very dark gunmetal gray so this helps him to stand out still dual molding looks great no matter where it's used and yeah this is a cool figure dang it i said it oh, i was trying so hard not to so hard all right well uh yeah different color arms translate blue there oh, i'm never gonna live that down the blizzard sword master gets a transparent light blue head because there's no hair behind him no helmet behind him so he gets a print on the back of it as well as the tattered cape and two ice icy katanas i definitely would have preferred those in a translucent light blue i think that would have been much much cooler but wouldn't have stand wouldn't have stood out as much but nah i definitely would have preferred that over this medium azure that they use and there's the print underneath this is a reused torso and i'm okay with that the blizzard archer has a helmet that is not light in color and goes around the back of the head so they again with went with the opaque head for this one and to bring in some continuity they also used the opaque arm in the, the light aqua color i think that a, a transparent arm would have been just fine or translucent light blue arm would have been just fine i also like the use of the, the pauldron in the translucent light blue so just you know different combinations and permutations were were tried i'm sure and this is what they ended up with i like that alternate face as well akita the shapeshifter is a very special figure with a very special headpiece it's exclusive to her obviously i don't know if they'll ever find a way to reuse that but that looks very good to me. The torso print is very good. It lines up fantastically, well, almost perfectly, with the, the hip. You see just one side where the folds don't line up just right. The leg printing is not as good, that's for sure, especially the white, and especially when you look at it up close. But it's not, it's not bad. It doesn't detract too much. It doesn't feel like it needs to be as bright and, and pure of white as the torso is. But what they've done for the tails here in the sort of cape style pieces is wonderful there's actually some good weight with the softer style of cloth at the base and these kind of have some bounce to them and they do pull themselves down automatically so they don't want to stick out it just it feels very good it feels quality and the printing on those is also pretty good and because they're soft i can just lift those up and let you see the detail on the back of the torso which is great yeah, that's absolutely excellent. Could not ask for better there. A little bit of detail on the sides with some folds, a little bit of depth. That's suggested with some of the shading. That's all good. And if I take this special hairpiece off, you see her alternate face with the, the, the uh, canines showing through there a little bit. And that's what that would look like. Uh, just framed up with the hair and headgear piece. Guess you should see the main face as well without a little bit of it being blocked by the hair. Here's Lloyd FS, the forbidden spinjitsu form of him, which looks pretty good to me. Has his movie style or Chinese style of, of uh, sword there. And for his dual molding, for his FS cowl, they did go with the bright green as the transparent color. And it just, it doesn't look that much different from what what jay has because the green the the opaque color just doesn't change the the appearance all that much it's okay 
I like there being a little bit of difference, and just overall, this is a good looking figure with a modern level of detail on the printing, but a classic homage, I feel, a classic reverence to his color and to the, the, the basic color based uh, differentiation between the different main characters. So he's got the movie styled head. Not the best printing on the eyebrows there. I wonder if they're doing that on purpose. Because I've seen that on an increasing number of figures. And, you know, some of the print is actually plenty opaque, but then some of it isn't. And the brown, I don't know if it's supposed to look a little bit transparent. I'm, I'm okay with it. And then Cole here has his katana and his hammer. And the hammer is a nice small build. It looks decently well scaled to him. A little bit of detail with the, the dragon head hilt of sorts on it. And yeah, it's just a, a good looking figure. I think a good version of him overall. No complaints from me. Got a couple of carabiners and also a food kit or utensils kit. I suppose that's what that's supposed to be on the back of the strap there. And yeah, there's everything just viewed normally. I guess I already showed you Lloyd's Forbidden Spinjitsu Cyclone or Tornado here, but it's got the trans bright green as the main color, glitter inside of it, and the newer form of pearl gold for the secondary color. And here's a quick look at the spare parts, including plenty of extra weapons and also some extra intentionally included pieces to use as ammo for the various shooters and such like that. And at least one of these small tiles here and probably something else that's small. Let's get down to brass tacks here. This is a $100 set that comes with over 1,200 pieces. And there are a lot of little pieces. Some of them you can't even see, but there are also a fair number of fairly large pieces, including big old, big ugly rock piece used there, some pretty large windscreens, and a huge, positively huge vinyl sheet for these wings and also the banners that are included on them. A good selection of mostly very good figures as well. Uh, all that stuff put together makes this a pretty good value, I think, on paper. And, I mean, as I've already explained, I really, really like the dragon. Why? Burn. I like the throne section there. This altogether looks very nice on display. Just has very limited play. Most of this is not that useful or usable and that's the biggest shame of this to me the major action feature and transformation works pretty well and looks pretty nice i think i'm sure it will only tie into one moment in one episode of the show that hasn't been aired yet as of the time of the recording of this video here but is it worth all that went into it i, I don't think so i really feel like this would have been a better toy if the action feature was super simple and instead there was usable space on the first floor especially on these sides probably if they didn't have the action feature there or if they just made it like i said very simple just a simple slide and a couple doors maybe even or even not that just left it off completely i think they could have made this a much better toy a much more usable thing that a lot more kids would appreciate and also older uh, older fans and collectors would appreciate uh, with being able to actually put figures in there in, in more and better ways and not having as much forced depth here. Uh, this whole walkway does stick out quite a bit, which makes this a little bit more difficult to put on some shelves. I think it might stick out just, just a little bit at the tip there as opposed to something that fits better against against a wall, you know. Just, I think something more traditional would have worked out better. And again, a lot of the little details in here that you do have to pay for, you do have to spend time building, just don't provide that much value in the end. So I have definite mixed feelings about this. Uh, if you disagree, please feel free to let your own opinion be known. But of course, I had to just share how I feel about this. And uh, well, that's what I always do. If you want to see the entire build for yourself so you can judge for yourself whether it's worth it, whether the number of pieces that are hidden away are actually adding to the overall experience because of you know the builder knowing that they're there. Well, you can see the entire process in real time in the Pure Build 
version, or you can just see the speed build, which shows you, again, the entire process, just much more quickly. The links to both of those will be showing up on screen momentarily. I'll talk to you again on this channel very soon.